Hello, my name is Bill McKibben. I'm a writer and I've been working around issues of climate change now for a long time. I wrote the first book for a general audience about global warming way back in 1989, so a quarter century ago. Um, even back then, there were already people talking about what we now call geoengineering, about doing things to counteract the trouble that we'd already caused. There were already people talking about lobbing artillery shells full of sulfur into the upper atmosphere or seeding the oceans with iron to stimulate the growth of plankton or, memorably, covering all the oceans with white styrofoam chips in order to reflect more of the sun's rays back to space. Well, in the quarter century since, none of those things have happened. What has happened, of course, is that um, most people, including most scientists and engineers, have stood fairly idly by as the planet uh, steadily heated up, as we lost the Arctic, um, um, as we saw the other huge changes that have taken place, including the rapid heating of the atmosphere that's made it a moister place and increase the incidence of drought and flood to the great detriment of poor people around the world. And so we are still back at a point where there are people who want to talk again about geoengineering, about some kind of huge technical solution to the problem that we're in. Let me say that this makes me maybe annoyed would be the right word um, for three reasons, I think. The first of those reasons is the oceans. Um, the fact that we've made the oceans 30% more acidic in the last 40 years would be reason enough to stop burning fossil fuel even if it had no effect whatsoever on the temperature of the planet. We are a water planet. The oceans cover most of our surface. It is folly of the highest order to do anything that messes with their chemistry and that scale and that kind of time span and none of the geoengineering solutions do a thing about it. Two, sometimes I get a little annoyed um, because the other solutions are easily within our grasp. In fact, they are the work and the glory of a few wonderful engineers who have, over those 25 years, turned renewable energy from a kind of pipe dream into a serious reality. Uh, we look at the few countries that have taken it seriously and see the strides that they've made. We see that there will be days this summer when Germany generates more than half the power it uses from solar panels within its borders. Yes, there are problems with things like intermittency, but engineers are solving those problems, figuring out the quotidian mysteries of storage and so on. Um, the latest data study from January from the University of Delaware made it clear that for a price comparable to fossil fuel and with a really steady and rapid deployment of wind turbines and solar panels across the United States, by 2030 we'd be able to supply our power 99.9% .9 of the time. That's wonderful, and it's precisely the kind of work that should be getting everyone's attention and energy, um, not, not this other set of answers. I think the third reason that it annoys me is that I fear that the psychological impulse behind it is a, a dubious one. It's the psychological impulse that comes with not wanting to be bothered to change in any real way, not wanting to bother to do the work of getting off fossil fuel, the political work mostly, because that's what it is, the willingness of engineers and scientists like everybody else to engage, to become politically involved, to go to jail like many of us have done. Um, 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 that would be really good work, but instead to sort of exist in this uh, kind of fantasist's world, maybe it's possible. Maybe we'll figure out how to do it without moving the monsoons off the Asian subcontinent. Maybe we'll figure out all the other problems that the computer modeling suggests. Maybe we'll figure out how to try it without uh, using the whole world as a test tube. But even so, these are the answers of, in a sense, junkies. 
Um, I used to run a homeless shelter and I knew a lot of junkies and their logic was universally the same. Um, if, if some deus ex machina will come along to solve this problem before I have to deal with it myself, before I have to make the changes, before I have to admit that um, things need to shift. And we're in that position now and we're at that moment of great promise when we could make that change. And I think probably that geoengineering uh, uh, gets in the way of that change. It's an enabler uh, to continue for us to stagger on a little while longer in the condition that we're in. Um, and the people who dream of it dream of the great glories, being the person who saves the world. Um, I admire most those engineers who are dreaming of the small glories, being the ones who figure out how to increase the efficiency of solar panels to three, four percent, who figure out how to deal with the dispatching challenges that involve a large grid spread out across a continent where the sun is always shining someplace and the wind always blowing somewhere else. Those are the kind of challenges I think we should be rising to. Um, and I hope very much that you all will take them with at least as much seriousness as these grand and grandiose schemes. Thank you.